guys, uh, today I'm just going to give a little introduction to uh, Arduinos. Uh, an Arduino is basically a little microcontroller. There's a microcontroller, microcontroller uh, on a, a little breakout board that includes all the circuitry that you need to make an Arduino or to make a microcontroller operational. So we have a clock crystal that uh, determines the speed of the microcontroller. Uh, if, if you weren't using a, an Arduino, you might change the clock speed of the microcontroller to suit your application. But it's very useful to have that uh, built in. So each of these boards has a, a clock crystal. It has a voltage regulator to keep the voltage right so that you don't damage your microcontroller. Uh, they have a little reset switch. So uh, if your code is has paused or something you can reset it back to the start uh, there's little uh, capacitors so that uh, to try and minimize uh, noise on the power line so that your microcontroller doesn't accidentally reset when uh, say a servo jumps or something and uh, that's basically the idea of an arduino is to try and make things very simple so i have two types here this this is an arduino uno this will be probably one of the first versions of the arduino and this is an Arduino Pro Mini. Now obviously this one is a surface mount uh, uh, version of the AppMega chip. So that's the Arduino chip in there. And this one is a, a, a true hole version. So it's just in a socket. So you can take this out. Um, now the difference is with these. Uh, this one has a... Uh, this one has serial or a serial interface or a USB to serial interface built into the board. So if you want to program this one, you need to use just a normal uh, USB cable. Okay, so it's like a printer USB cable. So you plug that in there, plug the USB into your uh, into your uh, computer. It powers the Arduino, and you download the program onto the Arduino that way. Now, I say a program, but it's not really a program. You see, uh, the Arduino chips, the AppMega chip, comes with a, a program called a bootloader, and the bootloader has been written by someone who understands how to program uh, Atmel chips, and it's uh, it's basically a control program that takes what you call an Arduino sketch. And translates that into code that the chip can understand and uh, in that method it makes it very simple for beginners to come along because you don't need to understand how to program microcontrollers to use an Arduino it has nothing to do with that it's just some very simple uh, C code somebody else has already done all the work for you so you just have to uh, just have to understand how to write an Arduino sketch which is much much easier than trying to understand how to program a microcontroller. So you uh, you just have to uh, learn about Arduino sketches and you can upload them directly to the bootloader. The bootloader knows how to uh, how to um, carry out the requests that you've made in your code. You know you could uh, want to read a voltage on your uh, analog pins here. So in this case, it, they're all labeled so. Uh, this is analog pins here, so you can read voltages with your analog pins. Your digital pins can either be inputs or outputs, so you can have a switch on an input. You push the switch and uh, you change the signal from 0 volts to 5 volts. And the Arduino understands that to be a switch and it carries out uh, something in your code. And there is also, if you can see these uh, little, little squiggle little kind of uh, squeals before the uh, the number on some of these pins that means that those pins can be used as a uh, PWM and uh, I'll do a video on pulse width modulation later on uh, in the series so um, make sure and subscribe so you don't miss out on that video and uh, pulse width modulation is important for things like uh, control of motors so you, you control the speed of a motor that way you can also uh, dim LEDs using uh, pulse width modulation so pulse width modulation is important for those kind of things. So if we uh, if we have a look at this other uh, board, so we've seen that we need the USB cable to program this. 
obviously this little board has a lot less on it, it's much more simple. It pretty much just has voltage regulator, the microcontroller and the, the clock and reset that's necessary, based the very bare minimum and that gives us a lovely little uh, small, very small package that uh, is kind of ideal for our um, RC tractor applications. But that means now that we need an external uh, USB to serial interface. Uh, I use an FTDI cable and uh, basically you plug this uh, into the USB port and it appears as if your computer had a serial port on it. So you wouldn't have a computer with a serial port any day uh, or anymore. Uh, I think they kind of went obsolete a long time ago. So th this, when you plug this in it appears as a serial port which is the same as what the inbuilt uh, chips on this board does. It, it'll also appear as a serial port. So anything you can do with a serial port, uh, or with a real serial port on a computer, you can also do with these. So you need this to uh, program these small ones. But I'd advise getting a USB to serial interface. This one is called an FTDI cable, and it's very useful just because it's uh, quite a long length of wire. But you can get uh, small ones that uh, you know they might only be the size of this, and they just contain. The, the couple of chips that are on this one so that uh, you know you can just plug it into this and program it and you can just get a USB extension cable for that and that does exactly the same thing so and, and they're very cheap by the way those uh, those uh, small uh, USB to serial adapters are maybe only a couple of dollars so you get that and you plug it onto this uh, this board and you basically have exactly the same connection as that you've just had to make it externally but I definitely advise getting some sort of uh, USB to serial adapter because um, uh, if you want to test your serial signals like uh, whether you, know, you could put your serial uh, to USB adapter on an XB and have your tractor uh, completely wired up type in the test uh, values into a serial port your USB to serial adapter will uh, send that to the XP, the XP will send it to the tractor and then you can test your tractor by simply sending the commands that you want to test uh, rather than having to have your uh, your controller built when you, when you do the testing so that's, that can be very useful so strongly advise getting a USB to serial adapter uh, with this cable uh, as you see it has a female header connector at the end so what I do I have these right angled headers. I just put the the header into this. Get my uh, Arduino Pro Mini, and uh, on the left here is uh, the ground wire, so that goes in like this. And I just apply a small bit of pressure, and that makes the connection long enough for uh, so that you can program your Arduino. So. Uh, it's just because uh, adding this header makes this much bigger so you know in normal circumstances that's not a problem but in our uh, tractors you know, we don't really have the space to be adding these extra lengths of uh, headers on so it's much easier to just uh, put the header into the uh, female socket on the FTDI cable and those uh, cheaper uh, USB to serial adapters they, they usually have the header built on so all you have to do is push it into these holes so it's on this side row of holes here push it in there apply a small bit of pressure and you should be able to get a good uh, program and I always do one thing you need to look out for when you're building your RC tractor is that the RX and TX pins here they are used by your programmer so you also need those for your for your RF module for your XB. So make sure that you leave a, a connection between these two pins and the Arduino, or sorry, these two pins and the RF module, so that you can disconnect it when you need to program your chip. Uh, if you don't do that, you're gonna. Ha you know, I don't think it will program at all. Uh, I usually get errors if I forget to uh, unplug those. So I would expect that uh, you will have trouble if you don't leave a a way of disconnecting those two pins. Um, 
so that's an important thing. Uh, I, I use the XB's so uh, they come with header pins on them, uh, male header pins. So I usually put a female header connector on the end of these wires so that I can just unplug it when, uh, when I want to do programming. Uh, there's one other thing. For testing I have uh, an extra one of these and this one has uh, header pins soldered into it so that I can push it into a breadboard. Now, I might or I definitely would wire one of these directly into the uh, into the tractor without header pins because it, it would be much smaller. Uh, look, if you look at the difference there, you know these header pins are quite long. You have to find space for these header pins, but you've all of this space has been wasted because you can't really get anything into that space. So I would just put the solder the wires directly on the model, being careful not to uh, damage any of the other parts while I'm soldering it and uh, I'd use this for testing so this with the header pins will just fit perfectly into uh, a 2.54 millimeter spaced breadboard so that can be fine you can also solder in this uh, header connection if you want but uh, you don't have to it's, uh, it's up to you uh, and that's all there is to the Arduino so uh, let's upload a, uh, the test program uh, the, usually the first test program is a uh, is a blinking LED and there's an LED here so we'll give that a go and show you how that works so just to show you the difference in using an Arduino uh, Uno and a Pro Mega uh, or Pro Mini actually sorry Pro Mini uh, this little board I had to make up to use this chip because uh, the chip on its own won't work you need uh, a crystal two capacitors for the crystal that creates your oscillation circuit. Then we had a hundred nanofarad uh, capacitor here to uh, help with the noise, and I think that resistor is for an LED, so it's it's, it's not necessary for just to get the chip to run. It, it's for a different circuit. But uh, you see on this side of the chip here, so all of this circuitry here is basically contained in here. But this also has a voltage regulator, so there's a lot of extra features on this, and that that would easily fit in there it's smaller it's narrower so there are a lot of benefits to using a pro mini over a, a Nuno so a lot more work involved in this and uh, quite a bit more soldering so uh, I'd use uh, I advise using a pro mini in your uh, in your tractors if that's the way you're going to go okay so we have our Arduino IDE open here we're going to plug in our, uh, our serial to USB or USB to serial uh, adapter. We'll now go into tools. So we have serial port 10, that's the serial port that we're after creating by plugging in the USB to serial adapter. I want to program an Arduino Pro Mini. So I go down to here and mine is the 5 volt 16 megahertz version and it's an Atmega 3 to 8. So I select that version, and so Arduino Pro Mini serial port. Uh, your port will be a different port, probably. Prob might not be port ten. Uh, then what we're going to do is go to examples, into basic, and blink. And we can close this one. We don't want it anymore. We'll have a look at this code. So. Now, this code is just going to blink an LED on and off, and the first part here we have, uh, we're setting an integer called LED equal to 13. Then in the setup, we set the pin mode of LED, which we have set as 13, so we're setting the pin mode of pin 13 as an output. And uh, then we go into the main loop, and this main loop is just going to continually uh, run through this code so it's gonna digital write uh, LED high so it's gonna bus uh, 5 volts output from pin 13 and it's gonna do that for 1000 seconds or 1000 milliseconds which is one second and then it is gonna put the output to low so it's gonna put 0 volts out of pin 13 and it's gonna do that for 1000 milliseconds or one second so it's going to blink an LED on for one second and off for one second and it's going to just continually do that forever. 
Okay, so uh, now we have our uh, FDDI cable ready to plug into our Arduino. So we do that. See our power lights come on. So we give it a little bit of pressure. We hit upload. It's compiling the sketch. There's no errors. Okay, error on our serial port. So it's in use. So we just move it forward, take the power off again, and turn it on again. Try again. Now it's uploading. And we have now uploaded the code. If we see our LED here, it is now blinking on and off in one second intervals. So we have successfully uploaded the code to our Arduino. And that is as simple as it is uh, to upload to one of these uh, Arduino Mega or Arduino Pro Mini chips. So that's all it takes to upload some code to an Arduino. Uh, I hope you found that interesting and I'll be doing a few videos on servo control from Arduino. Uh, I'll do one on pulse width modulation like I said and uh, possibly one on uh, infrared uh, receiver so receiving or decoding an infrared signal and um, transmitting infrared. So if you're interested in any of those, make sure that you uh, subscribe below because uh, that's the only way you're going to uh, get notified when the videos are uploaded. And if you have any questions or suggestions of what you might like uh, to, to see me do with an Arduino, if, if you have a particular question that you want to have answered, um, uh, either post your question in the forum or post it in the uh, comments below and I'll do my best to answer it as uh, soon as I can. So that's everything. Thanks very much for watching. See you in the next video.